second leg of the final of this first ever FIDE Chess World Cup. Last week, we saw Anatoly Karpov with white gain a tremendous victory over Boris Spassky of the Soviet Union. Tonight, it's Boris Spassky, the former world champion, playing white against Anatoly Karpov, the reigning world champion, playing black. And Spassky has to win to stay in the match. Well, Bill Hartston, he's got it all to do. Do you think he can win? I've been tipping him since the beginning of the tournament. Uh, he still has chances. Of course, after loss, it'll be difficult, but he just has to try to confuse Karpov. The one thing I'm sure about is that this game won't be a draw. E4 from Spassky. And a very quick E5 from Karpov. Spassky to move. So the situation for me is very clear because I have only chance to fight on, only in case if I can win the game. Of course, if I play the Russian defense of knight f3, I'm sure that Karpov is going to play knight f6. It's some kind of stamina. We played already many games, and I used to play the same variation. So, okay, in this case, f4 is very convenient for me. King's Gambit is uh, perhaps the best psychological solution. Anyway, I lose nothing, so f4. It's very seldom in uh, our time because it gives uh, a lot of chances to black. But uh, the situation of my partner is critical and uh, it's uh, known in critical situations. He can use uh, the king, king's gambit. And uh, if I take on f4, it's, uh, it seems to be very good because I take a pawn. There is no sense to play contra gambit. I take on f4. Okay, knight f3. Now there are a lot of possibilities to protect pawn on f4. Black has d6 immediately, h6, g5, and knight f6, even knight e7. But I think the most logical move is d6. Yeah, this is Fisher variation, which is rather sound for black. As I remember, Karpov played one game in 1969 in junior championship, making the same choice. He won a very good game. No, but anyway, I have nothing to lose, so I can play very free without any complexes. But first of all, now instead of d4, which I used to play, I would like to play first bishop c4 just to prevent g5, because in this case I have h4. So, okay, bishop c4 first. That's nice to see Spassky going back to his old favorite, King's Gambit. And Karpov playing Fischer's defense, one world champion paying respect to another. Pawns on d6 and h6, and he's preparing g5 to support this pawn which he grabbed earlier. d2, d4. That's attacking this gambit pawn, trying to win it back. And g7, g5. I believe that Spassky has never lost a serious game with the king's gambit as white, which is quite a remarkable record. Spassky castles. And he even beat Bobby Fischer with it in, I think, 1960. Yes, he was saying before, during the very early parts of the tournament, he thought he might give a king's gambit a go. Uh, bishop f8 to g7. I don't think we quite expected he'd choose it against Karpov, though. No. g2, g3. Yes, this is a typical plan for white, trying to undermine these, these pawns and hoping, really, to open the f-line so that his rook and bishop will combine in an attack on f7. Karpov to play. I played once this variation in the junior championship with uh, Kaplan, but he played first c3, then I played knight c6. Maybe it's uh, maybe it was not so good because he took the square of knight. Now g3 is logical move. 
there is no sense to play bishop h3 because after rook f2 if I play g4 he plays knight to h4 f3 I close my bishop and I, I have very weak square on f5 so I play immediately g4 mm -hmm. This is a very pleasant surprise for me. I don't think that this is the strongest continuation here. Okay, knight h4. Now I'm forced to play f3. Uh -huh, this is a good version of this variation for white, because uh, normally black fighting for the put in white pawn on c3. Now I have very good square for my knight, so knight c3. Yes, it's quite logical, but I calculate all variations before. Now I play knight c6 and I force, I force white to play bishop e3. Bishop e3, with a pleasure. Then I play knight f6. Yeah, now there is some kind of threat. I mean castle. In short side, so I would like to prevent this queen d2. Yes, yeah, that I expected. The, there was no move queen d3 because I, I could castle even. But after queen d2, I was planning to take on e4, and it looks strong because I destroyed the pawn center, white pawn center. So I take on e4. This is a typical little combination, very well known to destroy a pawn center like this. The, the pawn is, is protected on e4, but the idea is that when white takes with his knight, black will regain a piece by advancing his d-pawn and forking the two white pieces. So Karpov seems to have destroyed Spassky's center there. And it's Spassky white to play. Yeah, that's an obvious move. But I think that I have... Uh much better development, so I would like to create some threats. Okay, knight takes knight. D5. So, I have many possibilities here. For example, bishop takes pawn, queen takes bishop, knight c3. But I don't like that black can go to d6 with the queen. So I would like to sacrifice uh, this pawn, but just to preserve a tempo and to let black queen stay on d8. So I play first knight c3. Yes, the strongest move. Now I must take bishop. Rook a e1. This is a critical position of the whole variation. Now I can play the king to f8, but is it good? No, I don't like it because white plays d5. If I play knight to e5, then bishop to d4, and uh, Knight on h4 becomes very strong. If I play knight to e7, immediately he plays d5. Karpov's really got an awful lot to think about here. Spassky must be very happy with the way the opening's gone. Karpov's problem is this king stuck in the center. Spassky's just brought his rook to the e line and is threatening a, a horrendous discovered check with the bishop. He also has the possibility of driving black's knight away. And Karpov's big problem is that if he castles, which is the natural way to get the king into safety, then his rook will have disappeared from defense of this h6 pawn and white will just take it off. And all the white pieces are, are ready for attack. Even this knight on h4, which seems so out of the game is joining in the attack. And whether that's value for two pawns is another matter. But Karpov has a lot to think about. And even though uh, all the moves in this game have to be played in one hour, Karpov spending some, what, 15, 17, possibly even 20 minutes, I wonder how he's going to resolve this problem. There is only move to castle immediately. And then white, white is forced to play d5. After this, I must think. Yes, d5. 
No, I have three possibilities, but time is very short already. It was too complicated in the opening. D5. I can play knight to e5, knight to e7. And very unexpected h5 to sacrifice peace. Then white takes on c6. I take on d2, bishop takes on d2, b takes c6. I have three pawns for the piece. Very good bishops, very good pawns. Very good pawn structure, especially f3, g4, h5, and f7. And uh, knight on h4 is dead. That's a completely extraordinary idea Karpov's come up with there, just to give up this knight on c6. He just wants to advance his pawn to h5 let white take the knight, take back with his b-pawn, and then he'll have three isolated pawns on the c-file, a whole mass of pawns on the king's side. It's a position unlike anything I've ever seen before. Whether he'll do it or not is another matter. It really does make for a very wild and hairy game, the king's gambit, doesn't it? Unless it really is nice to see it being played. <laughs> it's a great fun game, this. Really enjoying it. Well, Karpov, still with all the problems. Maybe I don't need this in... The last game, if I make draw, I can I can win tournament already. And this is too strong to sacrifice peace. Maybe I play knight to e5. Then white takes on h6 and I can play queen f6 or f6 immediately. But I don't like this because bishop takes g7, king takes g7, or queen takes g7, queen f4. And I have pawn up, but very weak structure of the pawns, and white has active position. Very active position. So, maybe the only way, knight to e7. Yeah, this is a strange little bit. Knight e5 seemed, seems to me is a more logical move. But okay, if I play now... Bishop c5, for example. Oh no, 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 not bishop c5. After knight f5, black can sacrifice the quality, having a very good, very good position. So, bishop takes h6, only logical move. And now the, there are two possibilities to play knight f5 and knight g6. It, I, need, I need time to to think about. Uh, if I play knight to f5, white takes on uh, f5, of course. I take with the bishop, then white take with the bishop on g7, I take with the king, and then maybe queen f4 or queen d4. And my bishop on f5 is very, very... Uh, is not well situated because uh, it's very difficult to protect him uh, after rook e5, queen e4 and rook e5 and I have no squares and my king is, is too open so I must play knight g6 Yeah, this is quite logic Yeah, now I must change all these pieces first knight takes g6 F take g6. Yeah, I must take on g7 anyway. Yes, this is forced. Now my king is weak. And also I have only two pawns, but one he, white can get immediately back. But I must take bishop. Yes, now I have different possibilities, for example, rook e5, knight e4. But what is the best one? I don't know. Okay, I want to play queen d4 check first. I'm glad to see this. It seemed to me queen d4 was not the best move 
94 was more strong. Now, if I play queen f6, white cannot take on c4 because of f2 check, and the only move is rook e7 check. Then I have rook f7 or king g8 to force the queen exchange, and this is my chance, queen f6. Okay, I must play rook e7 check anyway. Yes, if I would have more time. I think this is already good for me. The first position passed on. But I have two possibilities, rook f7 and king g8. After rook f7 I don't like rook takes f7, king takes f7, queen takes c4 and uh, white has threat uh, d6 check and then my pawn on c7 maybe better to force the queen exchange after king g8 white has no other possibility mm -hmm. this is a good surprise for me rook f7 seemed to me as the only only way uh -huh. after this strange move uh, I have very good ending, so queen takes queen. Rook takes queen. Uh -huh, rook takes pawn. Very sharp game, Bill. Yes, even into the ending. Now Spassky's won one of his pawns back, this one on c7 looks as though he'll win the other one back. And it's a question of whether this bishop is better or worse than the white knight. But don't forget that gambit pawn, he's still this gambit pawn is, is rammed down White's throat. Maybe that'll be a danger. Something for Spassky to worry about, certainly. Karpov black to play. Now, uh, if I play b5, I have no time for this because knight goes to e4 or it takes on b5. No, the only chance, of my, my hope, is the activity of my pieces. So I must play bishop f5 after rook takes c4. Maybe I, I get uh, e line. Yes, bishop f5. Yeah, okay. Yeah. My move is very obvious. Rook takes pawn. I have no time enough. I would like to calculate all variations with bishop takes c2. But I'm very short in time. And. Uh, if I if I take E line, maybe then I can take C2 pawn because White has no rook F4, G5, and uh, if I take E line, then I take pawn on uh, C2, it's rook E8. Yeah, my opponent a very short of time. And he has a difficult position, of course, but it's a problem for me how to manage the winning continuation. So I'm getting nervous. I have 20 minutes, my opponent has a, only two minutes. Yeah, I have too many good possibilities. For example, rook c1, simple one, or king f2. Yeah, so what to do this moment? I also have something like H3, which is looking as a very strange move. So, okay, and Rook D4 is good also. Ay, 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 too many possibilities. Okay, I play H3. This is very good. This is very good for me. I didn't expect this move. But it seems to me I have winning chances already after this, because if I take on c2, if white takes on g4, I play bishop d3, only move rook f2, rook e1 check, king h2, rook e2. If he takes with a knight, my rook I take with a pawn, and uh, then I have a queen on e1. Yes, I must calculate very fast all the variations. But when I take on uh, c2, I have threat bishop d3. 
Yes, this is very good for me. Yeah, so now I see that my decision about Rishi was at least very strange. Because in case if I take with my rook on g4, like just play bishop b3, rook f2, rook check, king h2, and after rook e2, like has at least draw. So, yeah, yeah, what can I do now? Yeah, that is terrible, what I did. Okay, I must play rook d4, only move rook d4. G takes h3. Things are really going wrong for Spassky, is he's having... G1 to h2. ...having to be defensive. Oh, Karpos really seized the initiative, that pawn on the seventh rank. One square from queening. He's got rid of one dangerous pawn. The rook coming down to help the other one. King h3 to g2. Where has Boris's beautiful position gone to? How least, rook's coming off now? At least he has got a bit of time to think, whereas Karpov hasn't at all. Karpov must be close to his last minute now in this game. Well, that's a very strong move. He's threatening the bishop d3 check. That would really be annoying. What's Spassky going to do? That's that nasty check. Well, Spassky got uh, five or six minutes left on his clock, so he can think a little bit. Well, if he but puts the knight much. in the way, he can never move anything. Oh, giving up his rook for the bishop. Well, at least he's got rid of that pawn, but now he's just got knight against rook. Black bringing his king into the game. Knight advancing a pawn as a rook check. He's after this queenside pawn, pawn on b2. Spassky has to win this game to stay in the match. I, I can't see that happening. His only hope is this past d pawn. Hope to do something with that. And now Karpov bring bringing his king into the uh, defence or attack is he bringing it into? I think his first concern is to make sure that pawn doesn't damage him. These long-range rooks are so much better than knights in positions like this. Well, the pawn's one square further up. King's still stopping it. White's king defending a pawn. Karpov's king attacking now this pawn. Knight comes to defend it. But that's left. Yes, this a2 pawn was undefended. That's rook and pawn for knight. Rook checking the king. Now the queenside pawn's advancing. Oh, but what's this? What's happening? If Karpov takes the pawn, there's a check on b7. It doesn't take the pawn, it advances. Karpov's seconds are ticking away. He's really got problems now. This is extraordinary. Gee. Going to lose a rook, isn't he? I think so. Maybe the tension has at last got to him. Yes, he's giving up the rook. Knight checks, forking, king and rook. Oh, what's going on now? I, d I doubt if anyone knows. That rook's gone. Is, is Spassky winning now? It's extraordinary. The tension here is tremendous. And Karpov has so little time left. But Spassky still does have just these few extra seconds that he can afford to think. But how's his knight holding up these two pawns? Are they really dangerous? Of course he takes a pawn on the other side. Well, Karpov isn't thinking too much. He's just pushing his pawns as fast as they'll go. Yes. <laughs> Spassky has a little meditate and Karpov plays absolutely instantaneously. He has to, yes. Oh, that's bright. The king's coming to stop the... to stop the knight from defending against this A-pawn. This is really dangerous. Oh, I don't know what's going on now. And Karpov with slightly less than a minute left, possibly. Spassky with six minutes left on his clock. And Spassky really having to think now about how to stop these two black pawns. It's his knight seems helpless against them. But he's got his own pawn on the other side, of course, but... I must say, the saddest thing is, if Spassky does manage to lose this game, all the pandas are going to shake their hands and say, heads and say, well, there you are, you shouldn't play King's Gambits. <laughs> they both got queens now. It's queen and knight against queen and pawn. Karpov centralising his queen. Now, even queen and knight against queen is a theoretical draw. But it's not the sort of position you agree a draw. Many possibilities to win. 
Defense is difficult. <laughs> Poor girl on the demonstration board can't keep up with this. Yes, it's okay now. She's caught up. Of course, come on, Miss Baskey certainly isn't going to offer a draw. Now he has to win. His first task must be to try to win that black pawn. Karpov just having to respond instantly. Maybe a minute left, I think, on his clock. Could well, finish up with three queens on the board. <laughs> a minute's enough for a hundred moves. He's playing a hundred good ones, that's the problem. I don't think the girl on the board will enjoy a hundred moves in the next minute. Spassky's problem is, is to cut out the queen checks. Karpov would like to just go on checking this black, this white king. He's got somehow to surround the surround the pawn and keep his king safe from checks. Enormous technical problem. Well, he's checking the black king at the moment. So little time left. Five minutes for Spassky. Still a minute for Karpov. Now it's a difficult enough situation if you've got plenty of time to think about and analyse every move, but when you've really got no time at all to think, you've just got to have an instant thought and then react. Well, Spassky's possibly difficult. Spassky's done the first stage of his plan. He's blockaded this black pawn at least. Put his queen on the square in front of it. Now knight and queen both attacking the black pawn. Karpov still checking. <laughs> I've never seen anything like this in a chess tournament or anywhere else. And what makes it so incredible, of course, is the fact he's the current world champion and uh, a former world champion. And that pawn's gone just queen and knight against queen. Tremendous drama. Not a sound in this hall, and it must be packed, absolutely packed. Not a murmur. That's more than a minute left. Is Karpov's clock going backwards? Perhaps it's stopped. <laughs> Spassky trying to close in with, with King, Knight and Queen. It must force the Black King back to the edge of the board. Now oh, he can't move the knight, it's pinned to his king. Collection of little checks from Spassky. And just gradually Karpov's king being forced up to that top rank. And White's king coming forward. It's a check. I can't find a check with a, There isn't a check with a queen. I've never seen Karpov look so flustered. Queen comes back to defend. It's getting dangerous. More checks. Oh, I think Karpov's blundered. He's losing and queen. And Karpov has lost, so Spassky at the very last minute has won this second game of the final, and for those of you who are collectors of the truly horrific, savour Karpov's loss of his rook round about move 40. It's not very often you see a world champion do that. We now have a replay, two quarter-an-hour games next week. Until then, good night.